Hello everyone, welcome to Study A Tech. Hope all of you are fine and doing well in this pandemic situation. Anyway, in the previous videos we discussed half wave and full wave rectifier, right? There we learned how to analyze different rectifier circuits and how to do calculations for different performance parameters. But we did not discuss one thing there that is called the filters. Now what is filter and why it is used in the rectifier circuit that we will see in this video. So our discussion is why filters are used in the rectifier circuit. Okay. So first we will discuss the rectifier circuit without filter. That means we will have a quick review on the previous circuits that we learned. We know that this is a half wave rectifier circuit. Single diode is used and the output voltage waveform we get something like this. In the negative half cycle we do not get any output voltage. But in case of full wave rectifier the circuit is this one and the output voltage that we get in the negative half cycle also we get the output voltage okay but our desirable output voltage is this dotted red line the dc this is the desirable dc but rectifier is not capable of providing us this type of dc so we need some extra circuitries that extra circuitries are called the filters so the scheme will be something like this the rectifier will convert this ac to this dc called the pulsating dc and this pulsating DC will be converted to the DC something like this through the filter. So the stages are this stage is called AC stage and this stage is the pulsating DC and this stage is the DC. So in the pulsating DC you can see the output voltage is something like this and this can be considered as a mixture of AC and DC. We have discussed this thing in the full wave rectifier. If you have not watched those videos kindly watch them sequentially because it will be better to understand if you watch one by one okay so the purpose of the filter is that it will filter out the ac part from the pulsating dc and it will provide us the dc something like this now which electrical element can perform this job that is our question and we will investigate to find out which electrical element can do this job and it is very interesting let us see we know the three basic electrical elements are resistor inductor and capacitor and uh, the symbols are resistor inductor and capacitor like this all of we know and the properties of the resistor is that it can cause only the voltage drop but the inductor opposes the change in current we know this property from the circuit theory also we know that the capacitor opposes the change in the voltage and this inductor and the capacitors they are the energy storing element Inductor stores the electrical energy in the forms of magnetic field and the capacitor stores the energy in the form of electric field. But the function of the resistor is only to dissipate the heat energy I square R. Anyway, we are interested in this L and C and we will investigate further the properties of the L and C. So coming to here, we can see that the resistor is not a frequency dependent element. We all know that. But the inductor and the capacitors, they are the frequency dependent element because the inductive reactance is XL equal to 2 pi F into L and XC equal to 1 by 2 pi FC, right? Now, what is the behavior of the XL and XC if some DC signal is applied, we will investigate. We know in case of DC, the frequency is 0, right? So putting the 0 here and 0 here, we can write XL equal to 0 and XC equal to infinity. That means the XL provides zero impedance path to the DC signal. That means we can say it passes the DC and the inductor behaves as a short circuit. But in case of capacitor, the impedance is infinite. That means it blocks the DC and it behaves as an open circuit. So this is a behavior of XL and XC if the DC signal is applied. Now what will happen if we apply the AC signal that we will see now. We know in case of AC, the frequency is finite that means from this equation we can write xl directly proportional to f and xc is inversely proportional to f that means if a low frequency ac signal is applied and a high frequency ac is applied in case of low frequency the xl will provide the low impedance and in case of high frequency the xl will provide the high impedance and this is opposite in case of xc the xc offers low impedance if the frequency of the AC signal is high and XC provides high impedance if the low frequency AC signal is applied. So these things we need to remember. 
so keeping these things in mind we will now classify the filter circuits the filter circuits are four types we will discuss here one is called the l filter the inductor filter another is a c filter or the capacitor filter then it is called the lc filter then it is a clc filter also this is called as a pi filter we will go through one by one right first we will take the l filter this is our scheme where we see the rectifier output is providing us pulsating dc which is a ac plus dc we can write now the inductor is given in the series path then the load is connected so this stage is a filter stage now as we know that the impedance offered by the inductor to the dc is zero so what we can say this dc signal will be directly passed through this inductor and it will appear at the load right now there is a ac part this is also called the ripple part and this ripple is mostly dropped at this filter element how it is so we can see in the next slide we see there is a series path right so to make the ac part or the ripple part to be dropped at this inductor we need to make the xl to be much much higher than the load resistance then the ac part will be mostly dropped here okay now we will see what the waveform will look like at the load terminal we know this blue line is a pulsating dc that we get from the rectifier output right now it has some dc value and this dc is directly passed to the load and also this blue line is a output voltage without the inductor filter now if we use the inductor filter we know the ripple parts will be dropped at the l so the output voltage that we will get not perfect dc but we will get a something like this voltage that means the output voltage is closer to this dotted line that is the dc that means if we increase the l value this ripple will be much more less so the output voltage will be this one it will not be perfect dc but it is closer to the perfect dc so the point to remember here is that the l filter is to be used where the load resistance is small or we can say the load current is large in that case the ripple factor will be less one thing here i forgot to mention you might be thinking that why we use the inductor in the series part the answer is very simple we have the both dc and ac and we want to pass the dc as the inductor gives zero impedance to the dc path that's why we are putting it in the series path if we put the inductor in the parallel path then what will happen the dc will be going through it and coming back so no dc will be appearing at the load that is why the inductor is put in the series path right now we will see the c filter okay so the scheme is this one the rectifier gives us the ac and dc again now we are putting the capacitor in the parallel path why we know the capacitive reactance is 1 by 2 pi fc that means if the dc is applied it will offer infinite resistance and our dc to be passed through the load so if we put it in the series path it will block the dc and it will not appear at the load terminal so we need to put it in the parallel so that the ac part will be passed through it and it will block the dc and the dc will be appearing at the load terminal now we have seen already the dc is passed through the load terminal because it is blocked by the capacitor now what will happen to the ac part we know in case of ac the capacitor offers the impedance so what we can do we can make this path impedance very very low the most of the ac to be passed through this line so that the ac will not be appearing at the load so that can be done only if we can make the impedance of this capacitor is much much lesser than this load resistance so we will see it in the next slide see here this ac is passed through this capacitor and the dc which is coming out of the rectifier is blocked by the capacitor and it is appearing at the load terminal as i said we have to make this capacitive reactance much much lesser than this load resistance now we will see what the waveforms will look like we know here this blue line is a pulsating dc that we will obtain 
from the rectifier's output. Now this is without C filter, right? Now what will happen if we put the capacitor in the filter that we will investigate. Let us start from this zero, right? And initially assume the capacitor is not charged. So what will happen when this voltage is applied, the capacitor upper terminal will also be charged and it will reach to this maximum value, right? Then when the voltage falls in this way, we can say the capacitor will discharge to the load now because in this section capacitor is charging, right? And now after the capacitor is charged, if the voltage is falling, then the capacitor will now discharge to the load and this path will depend on the R into the capacitor's time constant. R into C, that is a time constant of the capacitor, right? When the capacitor discharges, the voltage at the capacitor will drop. Then in the negative half cycle, the input voltage again is appearing. Now when the input voltage is exceeding the capacitor voltage, then the capacitor will again start charging. Then it will charge to the max. Then it will discharge to the load. And this voltage waveform we will get at the output. So we can say in this segment, the capacitor is charging. And in this segment, the capacitor is discharging. And our output voltage waveform will be this green color and there remains some ripple by adjusting the C value we can decrease this ripple and we can get the DC output and our desired DC is this red one but we are getting this green line output waveform which is closer to the DC so we can reduce the ripple by adjusting the C value so the point to remember here is that the C filter to be used where the load resistance is high or the load current is small this we discussed little bit earlier, XC should be lesser lesser than load resistance, right? And in that case, the ripple factor will be less. So we understood the function of the L and the function of the C. That means the L filter and the capacitor filter. Now in reality, only L and only C alone cannot perform the job of filtering. What we need to do? We need to do this one. We can make the combination of L and C and it will give us better performance and this is called the LC filter. Also another scheme is possible that is CLC and it looks like pi so it is called the pi filter. Two capacitors are there and a inductor is there. This also gives us a better filtering operation. So in this video we discussed four type of filters. Hope you liked the video and if you are new to this video let me tell you study ETech is dedicated to all the electrical engineering students. We promise to offer you the best quality video lectures, study materials and career guidance. And our motto is to make study ETEC is a complete platform for all the electrical engineering students. And for that, we need a little bit support from you. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel, follow our Facebook page and kindly visit our website also. Thank you. See you in the next video.